that's an exhortation. There is nothing I'm saying now that is new. It's just to remind us. Keep reminding us. And there is a need for us to keep reminding each other. That is the work of the fivefold ministry. And particularly to followers of this ministry. There's a need to remind us Hallelujah. Of where we are coming from in the agenda of redemption. Where God has brought the church from, where we are now, and where we hope to be. It is this knowledge that establishes us in the present truth. There is the present truth. Hallelujah. Brethren, there is the present truth. And the burden I have to keep repeating some of these things is because of what I observe among our members, even members that have been here for years. See, when I see some things, we see your Facebook, we see your testimonies, those of them, those of us who are even ministers, who serve in this church as ministers, when they live here, what we see them do, some who are even here, and are, you know, the activities outside there with other ministries, other ministers there are people sitting down in this ministry some of them are even ministers I give one example that still believe that, which language will I use they, they see nothing wrong with women ministers and they promote women ministries Directly or indirectly. We watch you all. We see people who come to this church. And by the way you behave. We know you don't understand. What. Why God brought you here. So it's our duty to say some things. And keep saying it. And believing that. If you didn't understand yesterday. Today you will understand. Today we are looking at a topic. That I call rapture pools. I title it the rapture pools. Then the next thing, of course, we are at the end time. Everybody is talking rapture, 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 rapture. Everybody is so believe. Everyone, every Christian knows this world is going to end. There's going to be a rapture. Even the Catholic church believe it. That one day we are going to go to heaven. But how it will take place, that is the problem. And let me tell you something. The rapture has started. The rapture has started. You want to travel to abroad. Let me use maybe to Europe, to America. Your journey begins with getting a visa. In fact, getting a passport. International passport. Travel passport. And you won't even talk because you have international passport. You say you are traveling to America, traveling to Europe. You cannot say you are going to Europe until you have gotten a visa. Amen. Now when you get a visa, you can tell everybody, I am traveling to Europe. But still in Nigeria, but you have the visa to go to Europe. Christ in you. 
the hope of glory. Oh, praise the Lord. Even if you die, there is a resurrection money. If the spirit of him that raised up was in you, that is the hope of resurrection. But there is a process. You must book a flight and you not sit on the flight that you want. And even in the flight, there is economy and there is business class and there is a first class. Depend on which one you can afford. You may have your money, you may not have a seat. Listen. Even after you have booked a flight, you have not yet to travel. You are still preparing to travel. Even after you have entered a plane, you have not yet gone to Europe. Because even when you fly and you reach the immigration, is still waiting for you to give account of yourself. There will be inspection. We shall see it. There is a wedding garment. Until the immigration officer say, welcome to Germany. Then you say, thank you. And then you enter. Then you can say, I have arrived. So you can see the process. So it is with salvation. Don't sit down there and hope to be in the rapture and not get prepared to be in the rapture and the only reason is because you do not know the process if you do not know the process how will you go there that is what the five-fold ministry is all about and i am part of this five-fold ministry praise the lord Amen. now the commonest in the end time message the followers of the ministry of william branham there is a very interesting subject title a top a sermon title that William Abraham spoke about the third pool and some of them have presented it, presented it, presented in various ways to suit their understanding and listen there is a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 let's read it verse 7, let's read it up to verse 10 And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or up, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or apt? For if the trumpets give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue what is easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. Okay, verse 10 actually is my emphasis. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. I will take it again. I will take it verse 10. Let me read it verse 10. That verse 10 again. Listen very well. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. That is my emphasis. He said, and none of them is without signification. Every preacher is a voice. They are saying something. And everyone, what is saying has a significance. There is something that voice is expecting to achieve. And listeners will respond accordingly, according to what they have heard. Praise the Lord. And a lot of people have spoken about the rapture, about the rapture, which is what we see in the pools. The pool here is God pulling his people from earth to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is pulling his people. That is what is called the rapture praise the Lord that is what we call the rapture and it is called the pool 
God, the process of God pulling his people from earth and pulling them to heaven. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. When Apostle Paul speak about the effort to establish the believer in the present truth. Why is he calling it present truth? It means there is a former truth. Revelation is progressive. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation is progressive. It is from faith to faith. From revelation to revelation. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says so. From revelation to revelation. From faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And he says, and without faith, without faith, no one can please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible says so. That is without revelation. Without revelation, it is impossible to please God. And those that are justified live by revelation. God guides us by revelation. Praise the Lord. This faith revelation comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. I am also a voice. Listen to my own understanding. Compare it to others that you have heard. The one. By the spirit of God inside of you. The deep. Call it to the deep. There is a deep to respond. Praise the Lord. If there is a deep calling. There is a deep to respond. If you have the Holy Ghost. If I'm speaking the truth. There will be a witness in you. Yes. For the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Amen. And look at the picture I gave you. I'm giving you. And see. Compared to what you hear. That is the reason why we take time. We have been responding to a preacher in Nigeria by the name of Dr. Abel Damina. Who is our modern day Himanios and Philitos. that are saying fundamental doctrines that establish the believer that they are expired. Emmanuel and Philitos, they were teaching the resurrection that we are all expecting till now. He said it has taken place already. No more resurrection. Because they saw the, re the resurrection that took place in Matthew 27. Therefore, there is no more resurrection. They were misplacing scripture. Like Abel Damina says, water baptism has expired. Abel Damina says, there is nothing like, like, like generational cause. I replied him yesterday. That's right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And his likes, all these motivational speakers, Oya Kilome, Chris Oyakulome, he said that it's nothing like eating in the dream that it is bad. <laughs> he said, when, he said, he said, do you think that Satan will be so good, love you so much, he will give you food to eat in the dream? And he was speaking against himself without knowing. It simply means, if Satan gives you food in the dream to eat, it's actually no food he's giving you. He's giving you problem to eat. And I gave him the scripture yes, sir. that said the carnal man does not understand the things of the spirit. <laughs> For they are spiritually designed. Praise the Lord. And some of these people are confused. At the end of his message, Ever Damina was conducting deliverance. And yet he's saying there is nothing like generational cause. And he was breaking it. So 
So we need to speak. In fact, he does not believe in communion. There should be nothing like communion. The ordinance of communion has expired. Turning the gospel upside down and thousands of people are hailing. Hailing. Ah, this Bible is true. This Bible is true. Praise the Lord. Therefore, listen for faith. Revelation comes by hearing. Take what you hear. Very seriously. Take it to what you are hearing from us. Because there are many voices in the land and none of these voices without signification Apostle Paul says so. Therefore, study. What do you study for? To rightly divide the word of truth. Study. Rightly divide the word of truth. And in this age that we are in, Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples in Luke chapter 10. Maybe we we'll just read it, verse 23 and verse 24. And he turned him unto his disciples uh -huh. and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. You know, Joel prophesied of this thing that we have when in Joel chapter 2. But he didn't see it. Isaiah prophesied the coming of the, of the virgin birth. He didn't see it. The psalmist, King David, many psalms concerning Christ, but he didn't see him. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those things, even Abraham desire to see a city oh glory be to God he looked forward to it but he didn't see it amen and it is because they were waiting for us without us in the agenda no that mystery cannot be completed that's why I say blessed are you blessed blessed are you praise the Lord Study, study, so that you will know the grace of God upon your life. The type of love that God has showed you to bring you to where you are today in his plan for salvation. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51, he says, Behold, he said, I show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. But this mystery according to Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 if you read it from verse 6 to verse 16 he said this mystery is hidden from the foundation of the world it has been hidden 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 from who? hidden from the wise and prudent hidden from those who think they know hidden because it cannot be known in a theological institution it cannot be known by intellectual perception. It cannot be known through any form of wisdom. Oh, praise the Lord. It is known only when God himself comes down and reveals it to you. And because he will only reveal it to his own. That through foreknowledge of whom he knows, how they will respond when he reveals it to them. For he knows the end from the beginning. He got our names written through foreknowledge. He knew us and wrote our names in the book of life. And we are the people, the reason why he went to the cross on Calvary. And when he's speaking to us, he speaks because he knows we are a mixed multitude following him. And because salvation is not for all. They hate to hear me say this. Salvation is not for all. If everybody's name is written in the book of life, then salvation will not come by way of preaching of the gospel. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, because it is not for everybody, he speaks to us in parables. And so, you see that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 and verse 11, after he speaks to them in parable, he will come to his disciples and see the discussion that takes place. And, 
And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parable? Why are you speaking unto the people in parable? This he, is his answer, verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Again. Because it is given unto you. Who is the who, who is the you? The disciples. And these disciples, he called them personally. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. He called them personally. Personally. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And unless Jesus Christ calls you personally, and he calls you personally, oh, oh. Amen. To have a personal relationship with you. It is his own. And watch it. Who are these ones that that, that, that he calls? It's not just anybody he sees on the road. He bypasses everybody and so much you and call him. He baptized everywhere. Uh, uh, he followed and went to the river there to see Peter. He bypassed everybody, everybody, everybody. While he went to look for Peter, there was another one that followed him. Master, I will follow you. He will look at him. And say, see the condition to follow me. Did he give Peter any condition? He was telling the man, you don't follow me because you don't see miracle signs and wonders. He said, see, oh, the son of man has no place. Foxes have a hole. Bears have a nest. But this man, you don't get where to put your head. Oh. You go follow this camp and see. If you will follow me, you will carry your cross and follow me. Oh. If it is because of prosperity, you will go back home. Oh. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Philitus. Demas. Praise God. And today there are many people that are following Jesus for prosperity. Not for salvation. Hallelujah. Why are you speaking to them in parable verse 11 again? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them. But to them it is not given. Who are these them? Hallelujah. That is why he speaks in parable. But when he comes to the disciples, when they are alone, he will now explain the meaning of the parable he spoke in the crusade. He leaves the rest to in, give their own interpretation on their own intellectual interpretation. Go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy. Why did he just say, go and baptize in my name? He spoke it in parable. But when he comes to his own, he will let them know what is that name. Oh, glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that is why he told Peter in Matthew 16. Who do men say are the son of man? And Peter said thou art Christ the son of the living God. And he told him. Flesh and blood. No human being has revealed it. So for you to know that I am Christ the son of the living God. It is my father in heaven that revealed it to you. Because in Luke chapter 10 he said verse 22. He said no man knows who the son is. But the father. So if it's only the father that knows the son, it will take the father to reveal to you who the son is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so the, why we say salvation is not for all, one of the scriptures is that in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But the same person that said, Come to me, all, all, the same him that said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth should not perish. The same he came to verse 44 of John chapter 6 and said no man can answer that call mm. and come to me except the father that sent me draw him. Amen. And when you draw him I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. The assurance of the rapture. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So why is he not drawing everybody? Why is everybody not coming? Amen. And this answering of this call, everybody will come, but God knows his own. He knows who he is actually calling. 
And he said, all oh, that the Father giveth me shall come to me. In John 6, 37, all, all, all. And whosoever come to me will no wise cast away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is why you must understand that not all that say Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom. That is in Matthew 7 from verse 21. Not everyone that say Lord, Lord, Lord. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is the will of God? There is the perfect will of God and there is the permissive will of God. Praise the Lord. There is acceptable sacrifice and there is a sacrifice that is not acceptable. And this acceptable sacrifice will only come by revelation. That's why verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 11, he said, By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Abel, uh, than Cain. By faith, by which he, Abel, obtained witness that he was righteous. Righteousness is doing the perfect will of God. And it comes by revelation. For without revelation, it is impossible to please God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because all of them came to worship God by a revelation they both have. But one was the correct revelation, the other was not correct. That is why he said, not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is worshipping God. Not everyone that is going to church. Not everyone that is fasting and praying. Not everyone that has ministry. Some of them very big, 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 big ministry. Not everyone shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who is it that will enter? But he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven. And watch verse 22. Praise the Lord. He said, many will say to me in that day. Which day? The day of judgment. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So that you prophesy will not. It's not the evidence you go to heaven. And in thy name have cast out devils, deliverance ministers. It's not condition to go into heaven. And in thy name done many wonderful works including donating money to churches, donating money to offers, paying big, big tithes and offering, and doing mighty miracle signs and wonders. He said, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. He said, depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Amen. Now, these are the kind of scriptures when you read, then you will understand why Apostle Paul said, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because many are called, few are chosen. The rapture is a mystery. Not this mystery of these pools that will pull us from heaven, from earth to heaven we are going to be pulled away after we are gone this earth will be cleansed with fire the process of taking us holy spirit of god that's all that i says it says uh, 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 i think it says um, all through life's journey he said from earth to glory i only ask to be you know what gave rise to that song? He wants to be in the perfect will of God. He wants to walk with Christ. Hallelujah. He wants to follow his instruction. Hallelujah. You see? That is the desire of every Christian. Brethren, if you want to go to heaven, there are two ways before you. One is narrow, it's straight. That is the description. He said, the other one is wide. This one is few that find it. The other one is wide. 
the gate is wide, the road, the way is broad. He said, many there be that go in there. See, they already go in. See, the language, let's read it, please. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Uh -huh. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. It leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in Now, that is the language I'm looking for. Many there be that goeth daring. They are already going in. But now, the next verse. Because straight is the gate, and uh -huh. narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto life. That way leads to life. And few there be that find Now, listen. He didn't say few there be that entering therein. He said few there be that, that find, find it. it. You can find something, but it's another to enter. You have seen the truth. That what we are preaching in this ministry is the truth. You found this ministry. But have you entered? That is why he said, John 3 verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see. It is one thing to see. But if you are going to enter, you have to be born of the spirit. Water and the spirit in verse 5. John 3 verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Yes. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. You have seen it, but to enter, there is a process. There is a process. Make sure you enter. Don't just see it. Some of us see it and we preach it. We preach, we preach, we preach, but you can preach it. Like a professor of mechanical engineering, but he has not been able to produce engine oil, piston, kick starter, but he knows how everything works, but he cannot produce it. Professor, especially in Nigeria universities. Praise God. You have not seen medical doctors that are smokers. But he can teach you the anatomy of a human being and tell you the damage that cigarette can cause to your health. He has studied his even a doctorate degree in it. But while he's attending his patient, he's smoking. How has his knowledge benefited him? So it is when you find this truth concerning the rapture. Listen very well. It is the pull from earth to glory. Let's go a little deeper. There are two, two things here. Listen, there are two things that are done here. Number one is that it is the process by which you get a convert. There are two stages of these pools. The first one is what William Branham uh, 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 told us the angel uh, educated him on. He used, when you see, he told Peter, Peter, follow me and I'll make you what? A fisher of men. So if he said, make him a fisher of a man. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And he took time to even teach uh, uh, Peter how to fish. The angel taught William Abraham. He said, when you want to go and catch a fish in the river, every fisherman that goes want to catch a big fish. Your prayer as you are going is to catch a big fish. These fishes, oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. These fishes is referring to converts. Converts. Christians. Predestinated seeds of God. What do you do? You won't just throw a hook because this predestinated seed of God 
they have a nature. It's not everything they run after. Rather than jump up and down, they will sit down at home. They are not the people that are looking for church to attend. They are looking for where there is truth. There is something inside of them that makes them jump from one church to the other, from one church to the other. They don't have a resting place. There is something their soul is empty of. They want a boy. You cannot. If they are not the type that run after miracle signs and wonders. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't. So if you are going to preach to them, should I do? If you are going for evangelism, amen. Remember that you are going to meet the real fish outside there. Each time you make noise, they are still coming to look at you. They are the, don't you meet some people that face you, asking you questions? While you go, Sister Choma, Sister Rose, and those who go out with you, when you are using that gift to attract them, when they come, the gift, they will just come and look. When they come, did they tell you, see vision for me? They will tell you this thing that you wrote in this, your tract. Are you sure there is a church that believes this thing? That is the big fish. But there are some also that will say, ah, I beg, I beg, where this kind of church today? Ah, I beg, I beg. Maybe, uh, uh, Nadia, my problem goes solved. They are looking for where their problem will solve. So because the type of fishes are there, you will not go with naked hook. You will not go with doctrine. You will start to attract them with your doctrine. It will not, when you are making noise, jogo, 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 and all the noise, what will they make for streets? They don't come. This one, they don't get apron. This one, they come, they don't get apron. They don't come, they don't come. Let them be that. Amen. So there must be a hook, a bait. Fishermen will pack warm, pack waiting, and then they will cover the hook. Hallelujah. They will cover the hook. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is, there is a song in our Hebrew say, There is honey in the rock, my brother. There is honey in the rock for you. Lay your feet for the blood to cover. There is honey in the rock for you. You know what brought about that song? The, the sheep that the shepherd is leading, whenever they have problem, amen, what normally cures them is on that lime rock. The lime there on that rock is the healing substance for their sickness. Amen. But the sheep will not lick that lime to receive healing. So they will spread something that they will like, like a honey on the rock. And the sheep is having pain in the stomach for eating some poison. When he see it, he just see that it is food. It's not going to cure the problem. He saw something sweet and he will go and start licking it. In the course of licking it, he will lick that line. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is the honey on the rock. And that honey, praise the Lord. The rock is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. There's healing in him. There's deliverance in him. Hallelujah. When you have problem, you think you are running to come for your problem. You, you, are, you are coming for miracles, signs and wonders. The greatest sickness that is disturbing man is the sickness of sin. The cause of sin. When you come to lick the miracle signs and wonders, Behind that hook, behind that hook, I mean behind that bait, behind that worm that 
the fisherman throws is a hook. And when that hook hooks you, amen, you can't go back again. Oh, glory be to God. And so how do you do it? There are pools. You will throw that fishing bait with a hook inside. The first people, fishes that we call these small, small, small fishes. Anything that shakes inside water and a food. Even the wood you throw inside itself. As you throw wood, you go rock, 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 and chop, 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 chop. Anything move there, anything. Anywhere they hear there's a revival going on. Oh, chuk, 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 chuk. Amen. Anything. There are ministers that have left here before. When they leave and go, you will see those time of fish. They will run and follow them. He says, when they get there later on, they are waiting again for the next minister that will leave bright. When they leave, they will run again. That's how they will be moving up and down. What are they looking for? They are looking for something that they can eat. Miracle signs are wonders. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the big fish will not come. The big fish, when this small, small, small ones are happening, that is why, ministers, listen, those of you who will want to go and start your church, and those of you listening to me, anytime you go to start a church, the real members are not the first people that come to the ministry. I don't know if you're understanding me. Just, should I do? Just go to the bus stop and put the canopy and be clapping hands. Somebody will come and sit down with you. Amen. And that is where a lot of pastors make mistakes. But let me not go into that. What they are coming is to attract, to cause attraction. When they come, they will run. The big fish stays far to look at what is happening. Amen. Then, since he's there looking, then you have the second pool. You pull it, pull it a little bit from where those small, small fishes are. Pull it a little bit higher so that the fish, the big fish, can see that through, through there's food there, there's something real there. Because everything will be food. Some now wood will fall there. Be sure that it is no wood. Be sure that no be nylon fall there. Be sure that no be waste from one chemical factor in the pot there. You eat, finish, you die. You want to be sure which type of food is there. The fish. Then the fish. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, when you are sure you have seen it, Philip. Find it, Nathaniel. Eh? He ran after he went and saw. He ran to Nathaniel. Am I correct? Eh? I'm correct. What did he say? Come and see who we have found. What did Nathaniel, the big fish, what did he say? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Egypt? Another one again for it, Jesha. What did Philip say? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Come and see. Hallelujah. When he said, Come and see, oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philip came. Remember. The first pool was healing, deliverance, healing, deliverance, healing, deliverance. That is the pool of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, his ministry. Healing and deliver, everybody rushed and came. Then he graduated to discernment. That by the time he said, come and see, immediately he said, Nathaniel, what did Jesus say? Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said of him, behold an Israelite indeed. A womb is no guile. Behold what? 
an Israelite indeed. Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guy. That is the big fish. Uh -huh. Nathanael said unto him, yes. Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto and him, And began to discern him. Yes. Be before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Again, again. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee. Before Philip went to call you, when thou was under the fig tree, you were under the fig tree, I saw thee. I saw you. What, did, what happened? Nathanael answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Rabbi, thou art the son of oh, God. Oh, he thou has been looking king. for him. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. He has been looking for the son of God because Theodius came one time, Gamaliel says so. He pulled crowd. And that one faded away. Another one called Judas came again with his own crowd. That's how he led thousands of people. They perished. Gamaliel says so. So, is this one of them? But when he saw the original discernment that only God can know where he was seated when Philip came. The same thing happened with the woman at the well. That is what will attract now the big fish to come. He's still coming to see God. Oh, glory be to God. Then the angel said, it is at this point that you prepare for the third pool. The third pool that will pull him away from unbelief. Pull him away from the denomination. Pull him away from every error. Pull him away from the world of sin. Is the word. That is why you will not give him the word. Because that is what will keep him. 